Labour Party opens up on obese travails, says the tried to entrap him with prostitutes dung into his finances and bank accounts. Hello everyone, welcome to Newsport TV. The 2023 general elections may have come and gone, but the dispute over the credibility of the process continues to linger with barely seven weeks to May 29th when the president-elect is scheduled to be sworn into office. National Chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubo, announced the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, as the winner of the election. He said the APC candidate defeated 17 other candidates who took part in the elections. According to him, Tinubu scored a total of 8.7 million votes, the highest of all the candidates, thus meeting the first constitutional requirement to be declared the winner of the election. He also scored over 25% of the votes cast in 30 states, more than the 24 states constitutionally required. The INEC chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, also said, Atiku Abubakar of the PDP came second with a total of 6.9 million votes, while OB of the Liberal Party came third with 6.1 million votes. INEC and the ruling APC have since asked all those who chose not to accept the result as declared to go to court, a call to which both Atiku and Obi have taken heed to. Their results have been challenged by the first and second runner-ups at the Presidential Election Tribunal on account of alleged substantial non-compliance with its Electoral Act and INEC guidelines, voter intimidation, voter suppression, violence as well as result manipulation amongst other infractions. However, following the inten intensity of Mr. Peter Obi's challenge, he, according to his party, has become a target of state-sponsored intimidation, blackmail, threat invasion of privacy, and other acts of sabotage aimed at forcing him to abandon his legal challenge. Perhaps for the first time in Nigeria's recent political history, a leading opposition figure is allegedly being presented, pressured by state actors to leave his homeland because his presence is said to be threatening national stability. Only last week, the DSS, Department of State Security, raised an alarm that political actors were plotting to orchestrate violence through demonstrations and frivolous court orders to stop the scheduled presidential inauguration on 29th May 2023. Within days, the federal government to the Minister for Information, Alaji Lai Mohamed, in far away Washington, D.C., in USA, accused the Labour candidate and his running mate, Dr. Yusuf Datsi Baba Ahmed, of making treasonable remarks about the outcome of the presidential elections. He was quoted by the state owned news agency of Nigeria as saying, Obi and his running mate, Datsi Baba Ahmed, cannot be trained in Nigeria that if the president elect Bola Tinumbu of the APC is warning on May 29 it will be the end of democracy in Nigeria. Um, a member of the Labour Party presidential campaign who pleaded a nominee so as not to jeopardize internal investigations explained that the attacks against the candidates started as soon as the campaign started. He said, We have since been made aware of the orchestrated moves by the state to sabotage our candidates starting from our campaigns. They tried entrapment by stationing all kinds of women at hotels where our candidates lodged during the campaign that but failed. They have been going through records of his financial dealings and bank accounts. They have found nothing incriminating. They tried bringing up the Panama Papers that also failed, failed to stick. Then they resorted to the oldest trick in the book, wiretapping. Speaking in a similar vein, the chief spokesperson of the Labour Party Presidential Campaign Council, Dr. Yusu Yunusa Tanko, explains that the Labour Party candidate has lately come under intense pressure to flee Nigeria. He said before, before, throughout and after the campaigns, it is on record that Mr. Peter B maintained his commitment and focus on an issue-based campaign about a new Nigeria that is possible, a shift of emphasis from consumption to production, as well as a new Nigeria characterized by 
inclusion, justice, equity, fairness, and prosperity. He repeatedly stated that no one should vote for him based on tribal religion, but rather on the assessment of character, competence, capacity, credibility, and compassion to create a new Nigeria. Most, import- most unfortunately, in the past few weeks, Mr. Peter Obi, the Labour Party presidential candidate, in the February 25th election, has been contacted by associate elder statesmen, family and friends with concerns for his personal safety. These concerns have increased intensity in the last few days as immense pressure has been mounted daily and directly on Mr. Obi to leave the country, no doubt from sources allied to the APC and his agents in the security services. Mr. Obi has been re- repeatedly and categorically told that he has a choice to leave Nigeria or face the prospect of being arrested on false charges of inciting insurrection in the country. It is difficult to fathom and regrettably unf- unfortunate that state institutions have become part of a well-calculated, deliberate and orchestrated campaign of calumny by the APC to discredit and delegitimize Mr. Peter Obi and compel him to abandon his right to seek redress in court following the outcome of the last election, which was adjudged both locally and internationally, to have failed to meet any standard of credibility or fairness. Tanko further said, as part of the grand design, they are circulating a fake doctored audio recall. At no time throughout the campaign, and now did Mr. Peter Obi ever say, think, or even imply that the 2023 election is or was a religious war. It is very sad and wicked, the attempt to manipulate Nigerians. Our legal team has been instructed to take appropriate legal actions against media outlets that make themselves wielding tools in the hands of APC's malicious propagandists. Despite the public denunciation of the fake audio call, its contents have been translated into other Nigerian languages and circulated in most part of northern Nigeria, with some of our Muslim clerics deceived and instigated to use the content for their sermons at various mosques during the usual Friday prayers. This is a dangerous development at the time when the APC-led government and the APC party, which have been awarded undeserved and unfair victory, should be more concerned in addressing the ethnic and religious frictions, unfortunately created by the outcome of the election. Yet unsatisfied but determined to cause more problems, Mr. Lai Mohamed, who fancies himself as modern-day Goebbels, is on a tour of some selected countries to present an alternative story about the 2023 discredited election, and from his first statement in Washington has assumed the rule of the courts by stating that Mr. Obi has no pathway to victory. This is a direct intimidation of the courts and a waste of Nigeria's taxpayers' money. There are many more campaigns of calumny against Mr. Peter Obi planned for the near future, both before and during the court process. However, we want to make it clear to the APC party, APC-led government and its agents that Mr. Peter Obi, a widely travelled man, has no intention to leave the country at this time, irrespective of what happens. While we call on all concerned Nigerians and the international community to caution APC and the APC-led government to stop their nasty attacks, Mr. Peter Obi's focus on commitment to lawfully and peacefully retrieve our mandate to secure and unite our nation, take Nigeria from consumption to production, pull millions of Nigerians out of multidimensional poverty, especially in the north, and jumpstart prosperity through agricultural, industrial, and technological revolution remains unchanged. He has continued to impress upon his supporters the essence of the legal process and will not now or in the future encourage any violence against the state. He has absolutely no reason for this, nor is he desperate, especially as throughout the campaign he called for a new Nigeria, defined by opportunities for all, an end to poverty and criminality in government, especially corruption, and an end to tribal and religious division and bigotry. It is for this reason that we appeal to revered religious leaders, especially in the North, not to be part of the grand design of the state apparatus to further increase the religious and ethnic divides in the country, irrespective of the outcome of the court process. We have an obligation to strive for the peace and coexistence of all Nigerians. 
We call on President Buhari to ring in his desperate officials at all levels as their actions or inactions should lead to an unnecessary crisis in the country. Elections are over and we are in court to retrieve our stolen mandates. We reiterate that we are doing so through all lawful and peaceful options in line with our legal system and constitution and we continue to implore all Nigerians to remain peaceful and law-abiding. Those fixated with heating up the polity, created divisions, tensions and hatred within and outside Nigeria should remember that Nigeria is our only country. Our focus should be on how to address the litany of challenges facing us, such as deliberate non-adherence to the election process, the preparious state of our economy, unsustainable debt burden, lamentable unemployment and inflation, insecurity and multi-dimensional poverty, a new Nigeria is indeed possible and God will help us. Okay, so those are the words by the Labour Party um, summarizing, you know, the experience of Peter Obi before, during and after the election. Let's take a few comments that follows this. Someone said, this is a good write-up in the defense of Labour Party and Peter Obi. The APC-led government and few Nigerians and cabals who are benefiting from this bad system, like Lai Mohamed, are the ones trying to institute um, violence and all of these lies so that um, Obi won't claim his mandate. If the government didn't stay away from Obi, rather making any form of arrest on him, or otherwise the country would definitely be on fire. Another person said, kindly notes that by May 29, 2023, Chief Bala Ahmed Tinumbu will be sworn in as the president of Nigeria by God's grace because Yoruba have not ruled Nigeria before. Another said, primitive thinking. Another said, which idiot said people shouldn't make questionable comments? Did Buhari and Lai Mohammed not say they will make the country ungovernable if um, ex-president Goodluck Jonathan won the 2015 election? What, wasn't those questionable comments who arrested or charged them for those foolish questionable comments? Are they not afraid of questionable comments? Another said, each time I, I come across write-up like this, I'm very happy that we, the good-thinking Nigerians, are on the right track. These evil and wicked politicians of the old order will not give up easily without a serious dirty fight. But it's only the idiotic Nigerians who are still sleeping that doesn't know what these people are doing to the country. Another person said, um, anyone that has hears let him hear a word is enough for the wise. So these are just a few comments we can take. Honestly, the comments are so much, you know, of course, with with all these supporters giving their own, you know, um, thought about this summary of the ordeals of Peter B throughout this period. Um, so please, what are your own opinions? Kindly drop them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Do remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel. To our new subscribers, thank you so much for joining. And to existing subscribers, thank you so much for always stopping by. We'll see you in the next news. Have a lovely day. Bye for now.